Today we're going to be talking about section 11.3 in Stuart, which is the integral test. Uh, and what we discover in this section is that sums and integrals measure similar things. Okay. In particular, if you have the sum f of n, where n goes from 1 to infinity, and if you have the integral 1 to infinity, f of x dx, what we're really talking about measuring What we're really talking about measuring, if we have a graph of f of x here, let's say this is f of x, and this is x equals 1. So this sum measures rectangles with width 1 and height equal to f of x at the integers. Okay. Whereas the integral of f of x from 1 to infinity just measures the area under this curve. Those two things are quite similar. And we're going to take advantage of that. Uh, to define the integral test and also to estimate sums. Okay, so let's be a bit more explicit. So let's say we have function f of x, and this is x equals 1. The area under this curve is the integral, as we mentioned. Whereas the summation corresponds to this collection of rectangles. Okay. If we wanted to underestimate the sum by a different collection of rectangles, we could draw these lines here so that the right endpoint hits the curve. What do each of these um, shapes give us? Well, let's say we actually cut this off at x equals n. Okay. Then the area under the curve, that's given by the integral of f of x dx from x equals 1 to n. If we're looking at the area of these red rectangles, what we would get is the summation from n equals 1 to n equals n minus 1, because we're taking the left endpoint of that last rectangle of f of n, okay? And these green rectangles would end up measuring the sum from n equals 2 to n of f of n. Okay. So what's plainly obvious from this picture is that we have inequalities 
that the integral is bigger than the green rectangles and the red rectangles are bigger than the integral. Okay. Let's do a quick example of this. Suppose we're interested in um, how this works for 1 over x squared. Okay, let's just take the integral from 1 to 4. Okay. So we know how to compute this integral. It's simply minus x to the minus 1 from 1 to 4 or minus 1 quarter minus negative 1, which is 3 quarters. OK. Well, what would we, would we get if we took the corresponding summations? So the red rectangles would be n equals 1 to 3 of 1 over n squared. Okay, that's just equal to, and compute it explicitly, 1 plus 1 quarter plus 1 ninth. And this is 49 over 36, which is bigger than 1, so it's clearly bigger than our integral. As for the green rectangles, we have the sum from n equals 2 to 4 of 1 over n squared. That's going to be 1 quarter plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth. And that's 61 over 44, 144, which is less than 3 quarters. Okay, so that's an, a quick example to confirm what we just saw above this inequality. That the larger rectangles are above the integral, which is, below, which is above the smaller rectangles. So let's take the limit of that as n goes to infinity. Then the green rectangles becomes the sum from n equals 2 to infinity of f of n that's less than or equal to the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx. And that's less than or equal to the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of f of n. Okay, so our integral is below one ver it's, it's above one version of our summation, it's below the other version of our summation. Okay, but whenever we're talking about series or about integrals, what we're really talking about is limits. So we can use the limit comparison theorem. Okay, just to recall what the limit comparison theorem says, if you have something, uh, some sequence that's diverging and then you have diverging to infinity and then you have some other sequence which is always above it, then that is also going to diverge to infinity. If you have something that's convergent and you have something, a positive sequence which is always below it, that's also going to converge. So, using that, if the integral from 
1 to infinity of f of x dx converges. Okay, So if you have something convert, a limit that's convergent, and a sequence is always below that, it's also convergent. So we know that the sum n equals 2 to infinity of f of n is also convergent. And in particular, adding the first term doesn't change that. OK. On the other hand, if this integral diverges, So remember something that's bigger than something that diverges um, must also diverge. So the thing that's bigger than it is n equals 1 to infinity of f of n. Is also divergent. OK. So this is a really useful fact, and it's summarized as follows. The integral test for series convergence Um, and here's something that I haven't mentioned yet, but which is actually very important in order to make sure that this is true. So for f of x, which is first always positive, second always continuous, and third, always decreasing. And this is only important for values of x greater than or equal to 1. Then we know the following. If the integral from 1 to infinity of f of x dx converges, so does our series. And two, if the integral from one to infinity of f of x dx diverges, then so does our series. So this is going to be really useful to us if we see a series and we're not sure it's divergent or convergent. If we know how to integrate the function, then we're able to make that decision. Okay, let's do a quick example. Let's consider the harmonic series. And this is 
the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n. And we discussed this in the last lecture, and we actually showed that it was divergent. Well, let's see if we can use the integral test to, to prove that. So first we got to check our, our function here defining the series is f of x equals 1 over x. So we have to confirm that this is first it's positive. That's always true. Second, it's continuous. This is true because it's only discontinuous or it's only discontinuity is x equals 0. Okay. And third, it's decreasing. Uh, and you can prove this by taking a first derivative. So these two things are also true. Okay, so that means we can apply the integral test. So let's take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. Okay, this is an improper integral, so in order to compute it, we have to take the limit as t goes to infinity of 1 to t, 1 over x dx, this is the same limit, t goes to infinity, of ln x from 1 to t, limit t to infinity, of ln t minus ln, zero, ln 1, which is 0. But we know that this diverges. Therefore, the harmonic series diverges. Okay. So using the relationship between the integral of 1 over x dx and <coughs> the series uh, one of uh, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n, we're able to prove that that series is divergent. Okay. Let's do another example. Suppose we're looking at the series 1 over n to the p, where n goes from 1 to infinity. Okay, So you might ask, what's p? Uh, and that's exactly what we're trying to determine. For what values of p does this converge? Okay. So to evaluate this question, we're going to try and apply the integral test, but the integral test isn't always going to be applicable. For instance, when p is less than or equal to 0, 1 over n to the p is it's not, uh, it's not decreasing. So we wouldn't be able to apply the integral test, but we can apply some other test. So this um, does not have limit 0. So it diverges by the test for divergence. Okay.
Now we'll address the case of p greater than zero. When p is greater than zero, one over n to the p does approach zero. So um, the test for divergence is inconclusive. Well, how about the integral test? So if we take the integral of 1 over x to the p dx from 1 to infinity, so we have to check that this function inside is positive, and it is continuous, and it is because it's only discontinuous at x equals 0. And third, it's decreasing. And indeed, when p is greater than 0, this is a decreasing function. OK? And you can also take a derivative to prove that's the case. So. Given that these three things are satisfied, we can use the integral test. So let's take this integral. We have the improper integral is equal to the limit as t, <coughs> as t goes to infinity of 1 to the t, 1 over x to the p dx. This is equal to, well, it depends. If p is equal to 1, then this is equal to ln x from one, from 1 to t. For all other p, this is equal to x to the minus p plus 1 divided by minus p plus 1. Given that that's the case, uh, and we have to evaluate this at the endpoints, 1 to t. So let's put the limit in there again. Limit as t goes to infinity of, well, in case 1, limit as t goes to infinity of ln t minus ln 1, this diverges, which means that the series also diverges by the integral test. The integral test. In case two, the limit as t goes to infinity of t to the minus p plus one divided by minus p plus one minus 1 over minus p plus 1. So this behavior is entirely determined by uh, this exponent of t. Okay, If this is a positive exponent, then this is going to go off to infinity. If it's a negative exponent, then it's going to... Um, then it's going to go to 0. So this diverges if 1 minus p is positive, and it's convergent in particular to 1 over p minus 1 if 1 minus p is negative. So 1 minus p being positive, that's equivalent to saying, by adding p to both sides, 1 is greater than p. Okay, so in that case, it diverges. 1 minus p negative is the same as saying p is greater than 1, in which case it converges. 
So collecting all of the information we've gathered in this exercise, the sum 1 over n to the p, where n goes from 1 to infinity, it diverges for p less than or equal to 1, and it converges for p greater than 1. Okay? So we're able to decide a whole slew of series, any, any p series, for any value of p, we know if it's going to diverge or converge based on the integral test. One thing you really want to be careful about, let's have a piece of paper before you start. One thing to be very careful about is that the series and integral have similar convergence properties, but they don't have the same value. Let's consider an example of this. So we have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of e to the minus n. Okay? So the first term of this se of the series is 1 over e, the second term is 1 over e squared, third term is 1 over e cubed, etc. Okay, I want to use the integral test with the defining function e to the minus x. All I have to do is check that it's positive, it is indeed, that it's continuous, also true, and that it is decreasing. This is also the case. Okay, given that this is the case, I can integrate 1 to infinity e to the minus x dx. Okay, this is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral of 1 to t e to the minus x dx. This is equal to limit as t goes to infinity of the of e minus e to the minus x evaluated from 1 to t, which is equal to limit as t goes to infinity of minus e to the minus t minus negative e to the minus 1. Okay? And this limit, because this first term is going to 0, this is just e to the minus 1, or 1 over e. So the fact that this integral converges implies that the series converges. But this is not the value of the sum of the series. 1 over e is not the sum of the series. Uh, what the sum of the series is, we can determine using the tools for geometric series. Okay. The value we can obtain using geometric series. Sum of e to the minus n, n equals 1 to infinity. This is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over e times 1 over e to the n minus 1. 
that's in the familiar geometric series form and this implies because a is this first term and r is this second one this tells us that the sum equals 1 over e divided by 1 minus 1 over e or clearing denominators we have 1 divided by e minus 1 okay in a certain sense th you would expect these things to be similar but definitely not the same so this value is about 0.582 whereas this one is about 0.368 okay so clearly very different numbers so the fact that the integral converges tells us the series converges but does not give us the same value To finish off, let's do a couple more examples. So let's consider the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of cosine squared n divided by 1 plus n squared. So what we want to know is, can I think about using the integral test here? Okay. So let's think about this. We know that in order to apply the integral test, the defining function f of x equals cosine squared of x over 1 plus x squared has to satisfy three properties. It has to be positive. Well, looking at the defining things here, we have 1 plus a square and a square, so this is definitely positive. It has to be continuous. Well, the denominator is always uh, non-zero, and the numerator is always between minus 1 and 1, so that's, or rather, between 0 and 1, so that's certainly continuous. Decreasing. Could this be decreasing? I claim that it's not. And the reason I know that is that there are many values of x for which this is zero, okay? So for x equals, let's say, n pi plus pi over two, f of x equals zero. But then for other values, for x equals n pi, and both of these are for n an integer, f of x is strictly positive. So if you have something that's going down to zero infinitely often and then going up to a strictly positive number infinitely often, then that's not, that can't be only decreasing, it's also gonna increase. can do one more example. Let's consider the series 1 over n ln n, where n goes from, let's start from 2 because 1 would not be defined, n equals 2 to infinity. So let's think about how we would apply the integral test here. So because the lower boundary is 2 instead of 1, we would take the integral from 2 to infinity. But first we have to check that we have all the properties we need. So is this function positive? Yes, it's positive because 
Um, well, yes, it's positive. <laughs> um, is the function continuous? Yes, because we're away from n equals 0 and n equals 1. Is it decreasing? Here I know that the answer is yes, because the denominator is strictly, de strictly increasing. When you have a function that is um, 1 over an increasing function, it's going to be decreasing. Okay, so given that this is the case, let's apply the integral test. Integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x ln x dx. Well, here I'm going to want to make a u substitution. Let's make the u substitution u equals ln x du equals dx over x, and then this becomes the integral from ln2 to, to infinity of du over u. Okay. And this is equal to, turning this into a limit, limit t to infinity ln2 to t du over u that's equal to limit as t goes to infinity of ln u evaluated from ln2 to t and that is the limit as t goes to infinity of ln t minus ln ln2 which diverges. So the series also diverges. Okay, that's it for the section. Thanks very much.